Hello YouTube, this is Jesse from Stay Me Guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to continue where we left off. As you remember in the last tutorial we went over the math uh, and, and, let, and we were able to calculate certain problems by hand using the finite element method, the stiffness matrices. In this uh, tutorial I, we're going to start diving right into the code. But before we dive into the code, I just wanted to show you an example of, uh, of a micro, this is a microwave oven. And what they're doing is they're trying to visualize what happens to the food if it doesn't rotate or if it rotates. And as you can see, this is a, uh, a meal tray with different types of food. And then you place the tray inside on the rotating plate, plate and then the thing, you know, it has different materials, so it's different polymers, this is polyethylene, different foods, this, this case is using mashed potatoes, chicken nuggets, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible the things that uh, companies and uh, we visualize and we want to know more about. We want to know what's the dielectric loss factor of a mashed potato, what's the dielectric loss factor of a chicken nugget, and there you go. You have it right there. And uh, and temperature, how is the heat capacity, thermal conductivity, and this is what very interesting. I found this very interesting. The effect of food rotation angle on simulated temperature, meaning how you, I don't know about you, but I have a, a, an old microwave oven and the rotating plate doesn't work very well. And you can tell that the food it does not get evenly cooked. And the reason that it doesn't get evenly cooked or evenly heated is because the rotating plate is not rotating properly. Therefore, uh, these waves that get bounced back and forth, back and forth inside of a microwave oven are not getting to the, the heat. Uh, to the food evenly, and therefore, I don't have my mashed potatoes uh, uh, <laughs> cooked, uh, uh, heated properly. But uh, I'm just kidding. But uh, it's actually true. Uh, it, it's, it, the, all of this physics. That's what you use. Um, it's a lot easier to to visualize this using computers and using uh, FEM. Uh, methods in, in FEM libraries like DL2. But let's get started into the DL2. And this is the code. I've just simplified part of the code. I, I made it just one function. There was, it had two functions, but I just put one, leave one function and explain a little bit what's going on. These are the includes. This is, as you can see, it's using DL2 and it's using the class grid. And then try uh, try access or try iterator grid generator grid out header files. IO stream F stream because we're going to be dealing with files in bring creating files. And then the math because we are going to be dealing with math. We're going to be doing dealing with triangulation. Basically, it's using the namespace deal II deal two. And this is the function right here, and the, this is the main function, nice and small, before we dig into the second part of this one that is a little bit more complicated. Uh, here's just a basic function called first grid. Here is a, there's a triangulation in two dimensions, object being created. The grid generator produces a hypercube and triangulation, and this is basically, this is what is the grid generator and the grid generator header file. And if you want to know about any of these, like I said in the first tutorial, the DL2 is one of the best well-documented FEM libraries out there, if not the best. Uh, when it comes to documentation, when it comes to a well-maintained library, it's uh, basically second to none. So if, if there is something that you're not very clear, you can always go back to the header files or to the website, and, uh, and the, I bet you that it's, like, there's an like, explanation already there waiting for you. And for an example, if you want to know what a grid generator is, just go into the grid generator header file, find what a hypercube is, uh, how the template works, whether it's, this is the dimensions, uh, 
space dimensions, and, 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 and so on. This is just an example, but there, you can look at every one of them and, and, uh, and you can uh, find out what they do. Here, the triangulation is refining the global mesh uh, four times. So calculate that four times four times four times four. So basically, is going to be 256. So it's going to create a grid of 256 two-dimensional boxes. In this case, it's going to be little squares. And this is the the first uh, you know tutorial, just nice and easy. So you see a, a grid being created. Uh, it's going to be created using STD into a file called out. And this file uh, uh, is going to have the name grid EPS. EPS is an encapsulation format that is, uh, is a lossless type of compression. Grid out, it will, if, if you go here, you're going to find there's a class called grid out. And there it is, grid out. This, that's the header file right there. So if you want to know more about grid out and what it does, basically it does what the name says. It produces a grid and it, and it kicks it out. That's exactly what it does. So grid out, it creates, it outs a grid. <laughs> and basically not only a grid, you can see other things are in there. And what else here? The grid out, you're right. And into the right EPS and it's a triangulation out and then there it is. So basically that's what is happening here and uh, and now we're going to execute it. And there's uh, it's gonna be some files being created. I'm gonna remove the grid because I want to show you I, uh, I made a couple changes to the CMake list, so I want to show you. So now I'm going to show you the CMake list. And uh, I just changed the name to Grid. And I just put C++, C++ more modern instead of .ccc. And basically everything else is the same. That's all I did to, to the CMake. And the name of the file, of course, is Grid. C++, and that's the one that I just show you. And it's going to create a file, a grid called EPS. So let's close this one, and let's remove that one so you see one being created from scratch. And there you go. And this is what I have. I have the CMake cache tags, CMake files, all that CMake file related stuff. This is where we're going to execute. That's, uh, and that's the original file. And that's from the last tutorial. So now let's do CMake. And it generated, it configured and generated. Now I do make. And he linked and executed cleanly. And he created the executable called grid. So now we go here, we find it, grid, execute grid. And there's a file that I wrote called grid-1eps. And if we now want to see it, what it looks like, we use gimp grid dash EPS and there is your grid being created and that's as you can see it's like I said it was four by four by four by four so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen sixteen times sixteen if we use a calculator I think is um, row one. Let's just use a calculator here, really quick. I just want to make sure I didn't tell you one thing for another. So it's uh, 16 times 16 equals 256. And it's 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. 
equals 256. And there you go. That's our first mesh. That's our first grid. And uh, I promise you they'll, get, they'll get, keep getting more and more interesting as we go along. This is the end of this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please click the like box, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time with another tutorial. Have a great day. Take care.